The most important thing that digital does to any business, any business, media or not, is reduce barriers to entry. Anyone can set up shop and call themselves an author. Anyone can set up shop and call themselves a publisher now. Anyone can choose to get in this business. Now, not anyone can make a Kindle. That's still the realm of just a few very, very wealthy hands like Barnes & Noble and Amazon and others. But anyone can use those platforms to make apps, ebooks, little publishing houses that are only digital and have no costs and use Gmail for their office mail and work from home so they don't have any infrastructure costs. That, that's all, they're all reality. So digital disruptors share really only one thing in common. They know how to use digital tools to do things better, or faster, or cheaper than before. That's really it. It's a very simple definition. Use a digital tool to do something that used to take somebody else a couple months or weeks and you can do it in days or hours. Or that used to take someone else $10 million and you can do it for 10,000. Or that used to take them 10,000 and you can do it for 100 or for less. That's, that's what digital disruption is all about. And the fact is it can allow anyone to be a digital disruptor. Now some digital disruptors are more likely to be successful than others. The ones who already have a digital customer relationship and all they have to do is use that relationship to start getting into a new business, those people are going to be the most successful. Because in the end, right now, publishers are working really hard to build up a base of customers that they can work with in the long run. If you're a blogger who already has a million followers, You've already got the relationship. You can turn that into publishing money overnight. And that's what we're seeing happen again and again and again. It's a little bit like the old days of publishing where if you were a celebrity, you could go to a publishing house and say, hey, there are a couple thousand million maybe people out there who care about me. We should work on a book together. My name's Snooky. We'll publish it. We'll get it out there. And you know, a lot of people will read it. Well, now Snooky has an advantage. She also has a Twitter following that would absolutely blow uh, you know, any political figure away completely. So she can turn that into publishing money. Now, whether she chooses to work with a traditional publisher, as she has done, or whether, as many others are doing, are saying, I'm going to cut out the publisher and take 70% instead of work with the publisher and take 15%. So what happens is these digital disruptors, no matter how big or small they are, see the opportunity, they use the digital tool, and then they get in there, they start thinking, more opportunistically than traditional uh, players do. Traditional players are happy to have a product, they get it in the market, and then they take their hands off of it. A digital disruptor gets their, gets their product in the market, and then they say, oh, it would be better if I added this, and so they add it. It would be better if I enhanced it this way, and so they enhance it, or they add a companion experience or a different app. We're seeing that in the app space. Apps are updated weekly in some cases. And in fact, that's a strategy for making sure people remember that they have your app downloaded now. App developers routinely add things every one or two weeks so that you get a little notification that says, remember me, you downloaded me, you might want to use me again because I just got updated. Well, that's the way digital disruptors think. And it creates opportunities for people who are small to get in. We call them startups. But it also creates opportunities for people who are in adjacent industries to slide over. That kind of opportunity, whether it's from a startup or whether it's from an adjacent business that never considered publishing an option before, is now rampant. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing individual authors choose to anoint themselves millionaires by just publishing on Kindle. And we're seeing company after company after company say, hey, I know a thing or two about content, whether it's in textbooks or business or education or fiction. I can be a publisher too. And that's what's happening. It's happened in every single business. It's happening in video right now with Google getting, spending $100 million to create a whole new world of video production for YouTube. That's the game right now. Expand production because costs of production have gone way down and the distribution platforms have been opened up in a way that they've never been before. That's what disruption fundamentally does.